Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen and today I'm going to show you how to make really super yummy chocolate ganache and how to drip it onto your cake. I'm also going to show you how to pour it on top of your cake if you wanted to do that as well. So here's the ingredients and tools you're going to need if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. I highly recommend Giardelli brand chocolate. I love their chocolate. Also, go for the squeeze bottle with a bigger opening as opposed to a smaller one. So start with putting your chocolate chips in a microwavable bowl and then pour your cream over it. And you're going to put it in the microwave on high for 1 minute 10 seconds. That should be enough to melt the chocolate. If not, just add in 10 second intervals and just make sure to mix it every time. And then go ahead and whisk this up. It'll take a little time to whisk this together, um, but you'll notice once it's as dark as the chocolate chips where you know, put them in, you're done. Okay, you can go ahead and carefully pour this into the bottle now. So I like to take a Tupperware or something and practice with the drip just to make sure it's dripping smoothly. Um, if it's too runny, you might want to start over um, making your ganache because you probably added too much cream. If it's not runny enough, perhaps it's too cold and you can go ahead and put it in the microwave a little longer um, in 10 second intervals. Just make sure to shake the bottle. You also may not have added enough cream. And you can also take a toothpick and put it through the hole in the top, um, through the top and open it up and put it through the bottom as well. Um, just make sure you don't have some random chocolate chip stuck in there. If that keeps happening, I would just go ahead and warm it up or start over. But it's if it happens every once in a while, you can just poke it with the toothpick. You can also put it in a cup of hot water to warm it. Very important, if the chocolate's not coming out of the bottle, don't keep squeezing it. The pop top will pop off and go all over your cake. I've done it before. So if you've seen my how to make a color drip video, I recommend that the longest drip doesn't go much past a half of the height of the cake. With the chocolate, since it looks so yummy, I go a little crazier, and I don't mind if the drips end up being super long. The only rule I really do have on that is not to have two of the same length of lines in a row. And I like to vary it up where like three or four are all different uh, lengths. So this is called a controlled drip, meaning you you put where your drip wants to be, you squeeze it, and then you just move it over as far as you want and squeeze it again. And you just do this around your entire cake. And the longer you want your drip, the longer you squeeze it and hold the squeeze for. Um, if you do a drip shorter than you want, you can go over it again and make it longer. Um, if you do it too long, it's harder to change that. Um, you can put it in the refrigerator for like 15 minutes so it hardens and you can try to crack it off and then drip over it again um, to the length you want, but it could ruin your buttercream. You can also go back and add drips wherever you want. So here's another technique where you just put the bottle at the edge of the cake and squeeze the whole time while you move the cake in circles with your turntable. This gives it more of a natural kind of spill over look so if you want to cover the entire top, you just pour ganache in like a circle, leaving a little bit of space uh, at the edge because you're going to go ahead and spread this around with your spatula to bring it to the edge. Just make sure you do not go over the edge with your ganache. So it's better to add more if you didn't do enough than have too much because it will spill over. And just use a real gentle touch with this and don't do it more than you have to because the ganache will start to harden and then it'll start showing marks with the spatula. So you'll see these chocolates are a little different color because the sides had already hardened. They will become the same color once the top hardens. So if you didn't need a control drip on the sides and you want this to look really seamless and smooth, you would not do the sides first. You'd actually do the top and the sides at the same time where you would pour 
that ganache on the top of your cake, but this time you wouldn't leave any space. You'd bring it right to the edge, and then when you bring your spatula around, it will cause that natural pour over drip look that I showed you. I don't recommend that for a beginner though because the other way looks really good too. And it's kind of hard to be thinking about the top and the sides all at the same time. So that's it guys. You know how to make a nosh and how to drip it on a cake. Great job. Thank you guys so much for watching and can't wait to see you next time.